Living as a person of faith in modern society can be very challenging. Surrounded as we are by materialism, immorality, and a growing trend away from religion. I want to find out how Ahmadi Muslim women are navigating these challenges, and specifically how the institution of Khilafat is a source of inspiration and empowerment. There's a misconception that Islam suppresses the rights of women and forces us to remain uneducated and subservient. We spoke to Munazza Alam Saiba of Washington, D.C., who is one of many Ahmadi Muslim women around the world who are eradicating this misconception. Let's listen to her story. I'm an astronomer studying exoplanets or planets outside of the solar system. I studied physics as an undergraduate and went on after that to pursue a PhD in astronomy and astrophysics. Today, I am an astronomy research scientist, and my work focuses on using observations of exoplanets to characterize their atmospheres. For people who say that Islam denies education opportunities for women, I would say that these ideas are propagated by misinformation in the media, extremists who are trying to push their own agenda, and people who simply conflate their cultural notions with religion. Islamically, education is given the utmost respect. There is a saying of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, who himself was not literate, that says, the acquisition of knowledge is obligatory upon every Muslim man and woman. This saying specifically mentions that women are also required to seek an education. He also said that seek knowledge even if you have to go to China that this pursuit of knowledge is something that we should all strive for, even if it means hardship or traveling far and wide. For me personally, I've been inspired by a sermon of the second Khalifa. In this sermon, he states that it is a promise of God that members of Jamaat Ahmadiyya will excel in every secular field. And because this is a promise of God, members of Jamaat Ahmadiyya that work toward the fulfillment of this promise by pushing forward and reaching the highest echelons of their fields are actually engaging in acts of worship. We have this idea that there is a split between worldly and religious pursuits. And this is true, but education is one of those pursuits that serves both purposes. While we can gain worldly success through educational pursuits, this sermon reminds us that education is also a religious pursuit because this pursuit in itself is contributing to a fulfillment of this promise of God, showing that Jamaat Ahmadiyya will triumph. We are so blessed to have Khilafat Ahmadiyya because our Khalifa cares and prays for each and every member of the Jamaat, including its women. Our current Khalifa is also extremely supportive of research and specifically Ahmadi Muslims excelling in research. In many verses of the Holy Quran, including those just recited. Allah the Almighty has mentioned the creation of the heavens and the earth, and He has instructed us to reflect upon the true purpose of our creation. He has encouraged us to use our brains and to ponder upon His creation and to search for new roads of human progress and innovation through research and reflection. The Prophet Messiah Islam has stated that the continued study of physics, <coughs> astronomy, and the sciences will always lead a righteous person towards God Almighty. The more they learn about God's creation and the world around them, the more they will appreciate the beauty of Allah, the Almighty, through the wonders of the universe. 
In fact, he has not only encouraged Amelie Muslims to make the Nobel Prize their minimum goal, but has also said that Amelie Muslims should contribute to the second golden age of Islam in science. You must all consider it your mission to pursue excellence within your chosen fields. You must have uh, you must leave here with a firm determination in your hearts to follow in the footsteps of Dr. Abdul Salam and those outstanding Muslim scholars and researchers who left behind a rich legacy of knowledge many centuries ago. I pray that may Allah the Almighty enable you to flourish and to achieve great success in your field of expertise. And may we soon come to witness the dawn of a new Islamic golden age of intellectual progress and advancement led by Ahmadi Muslims across the world. Amen. The guidance of our Khulafa continues to inspire us to reach the highest levels in education and to excel in the workplace. Our next guest, Mansoura Siraji, is a lawyer working in the nation's capital. Let's hear how she balances her professional life with her Islamic identity. I, alhamdulillah, obtained a law degree in the United States. It's called a Juris Doctorate from the University of California, Berkeley School of Law. And um, I currently work as a attorney at an international law firm in Washington, DC. I practice antitrust law and um, before this, I worked at uh, the United States Department of Justice. Islam does not um, deny career or educational opportunities for women. In fact, the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him's um, wife, um, was a very successful businesswoman. And throughout his life, he encouraged Muslims to pursue knowledge uh, from cradle to grave. And in this day and age, the Ahmadiyya Muslim community um, Muslim men and women seek uh, career advice regularly from our Khalifa. Hazur has encouraged Muslim women to pursue careers that help humanity, including pursuing careers in medicine, as journalists, as uh, teachers, as lawyers, among many other professions. Um, Muslim women are very lucky. We wear many different hats, including um, uh, we serve as the primary caretakers of our homes. And as long as we are able to fulfill our obligations to our homes, we are uh, free to pursue um, any good um, career that um, uh, we'd like to. And in fact, many Muslim women are able to beautifully balance um, both their obligations to their homes as well as their careers. Um, in some Muslim countries, Muslim women are barred from seeking education and from seeking uh, careers, and um, there is no basis in Islam for that practice. Alhamdulillah, I haven't faced any challenges in pursuing a career as a Muslim woman. In fact, my Muslim identity is an asset. I'm very lucky to live in a country where the freedom of religion is guaranteed, and in every workplace um, that I've had the blessing of working in, um, diver a diversity of experience is considered an asset. Um, to be candid, if there's ever been any challenges to pursuing a career as a Muslim woman, those challenges have been in my own mind. I did wonder at one point in high school whether it was possible to be, um, to observe Barda and also pursue a career in the law. And to anybody who um, has that same question, I can say with complete confidence that you can. And in fact, when you fulfill the obligations that are due to Allah, um, you are guaranteed success in the fullest sense of the word, inshallah. There are countless blessings to Khalafat, um, including empowering women. And just to name a few, um, in Hazur, you have somebody who is a constant mentor. He is your mentor from kindergarten to retirement and beyond those ends as well. He is constantly pushing us to strive harder and to do better. And in fact, he expects each of us to achieve the equivalent of a Nobel Prize in each of our respective 
professions. Um, at the same time, Hazur is somebody who keeps us imminently grounded. By that, I mean Hazur has advised us on multiple occasions not to get lost in the glitz and the glamour of the world. Um, most recently in his 2021 address to the UK Lajna um, at their Ishtama, he stated that pursuing vain material aspects of the world is like drinking salt water. The more you drink, the more thirsty you become. And um, I believe that the work-life balance that so many um, men and women seek to achieve can be achieved by following this advice from Hazur, inshallah. We are living in a time of ever-rising materialism and world, worldliness where despite being intelligent and despite having eyes to see with, most people are living a life of spiritual and moral blindness in which they consider anything that shimmers or glistens to be made of gold. There will come a time when they will recognize that constant exposure to material things on TV, on the internet, and on social media, and the pursuit of vain desires has been to their profound detriment. They will see how all that they have considered as good and progressive has actually triggered a spiritual and moral malaise, the like of which perhaps the world has never seen before. Islam greatly upholds the honor of women, and one such example is in their role as a mother. The Holy Prophet وسلم, even went as far as saying that paradise lies under the feet of your mother. We spoke to our next guest, about how Khilafat guides her in her family life. We got married in 1976. I was born here in the U.S., so I've been here all my life. And my kids' ages range from the mid-40s down to the mid-30s. I would say that, first of all, women were given their rights over 1,400 years ago, and it was um, revealed in the Holy Quran that you have rights to inherit from your family, from your husbands, uh, land, money. And with those rights also came the requirement for the children to be educated. And with that education, they can take that and become whatever they want to be. Well, so far as the rights provided by a woman, they have had those rights since for, uh, for 1400 years that was given to them by Islam in the Quran. They did not have to ask for it. They did not, did not have to fight for it. It was their God-given right where they could do what they wanted. They did not have to just sit at home and be a housewife in the fr mind frame is that's all they could be. And it was demanded of them to be a housewife. But a housewife in actuality it's actually a very big job. So when someone chooses to become a housewife, they're actually doing a very dutiful thing because when women raise their children, they raise them for, to be pious, they raise them to be loving, they raise them to be educated, uh, to give them the guidance to grow and be what they want to be also. So the children grow and become an integral part themselves of society and helping mankind to um, go forward and to change laws, rules, regulations, people's mindsets. So if the women are able and capable to do that with their children so that they now are changing the world, what is better than that? Unquestionably, women play an indispensable role in society because the future generations lie in their laps and grow up in their tender care. 
This fact alone greatly increases the responsibility placed upon Ahmadi women to ensure that they view those programs or read those books that strengthen their moral fiber and which help them to fulfill the purpose of being part of the community established by the Prophet We've had challenges of a different concept because you have now internet, you have cell phones that they're constantly glued to, they have access to different websites, they don't know all the time where they're going. You have the Facebook, the TikTok, the Snap, the Instagram. We didn't have to deal with those type of situations, but we still had to deal with who our kids were in communion with, who they wanted their friends to be, um, what clothes to wear, but because we, the parents, purchased the clothes, we knew what they were going to wear. Uh, we also had these situations where any food they wanted to eat, always asking and inquiring, what is in this? Don't take it for granted because someone is eating it and you think it might be good for you, where it is not. So a lot of times we would send their lunches. They wouldn't buy lunch at school. Also, we had to deal with ho uh, different holidays, Christmas, Easter, Halloween. And we explained to the kids that even though you see them having fun and they're enjoying themselves, or they may be giving a, a gift or a little toy, something to their friends, that you also have to eat. So you don't have to worry about, you know, what they have and what they didn't have. It is up to us to bring about a moral and spiritual revolution in the world and so train your children so that they grow to be ready to take up the mantle of serving the mission of the Prophet Muhammad Islam. Uh, what Khalafa has done was to continue to explain, express, and guide as to how you can deal with those different obstacles in today's society. One of the things that Islam states and the Khalifas always state is that you must train your children. And you don't realize how early you need to start training your kids. They're smarter than we think they are. You think, oh, I'll wait until I think they can understand the words I'm saying. No, kids understand what you're doing when they're like five, six, seven months old because they begin to see how you behave, how you act, the tone of your voice. Uh, you pay attention and you see their eyes following you around. And the reason for that is they're gonna mimic you. They mimic what they see. And if what you show them is a good uh, and pious individual, that's what they would become. Also, another one is that you treat your children the same. You do not give preference to one child over the other. If there is some education that needed to be uh, taught, they all got it. To help them excel in school, they all got it. To teach them to clean, cook, wash dishes, they all got it. So there is no preferential treatment between one and the other. Simply put, an Ahmadi should remember that they must not allow themselves to become so engrossed or manipulated by their surroundings that they forget their basic religious teachings or ignore their duty to train their children according to Islamic teachings. We've been on a journey looking at how Ahmadi Muslim women balance their family life, education, and professional lives with their Islamic identity. But what impact does this have on wider society? Our last guest, Rukaya Asad Saiba, can tell us more. I was a teacher for around 15 years, um, working with all different ages of children. I taught elementary school um, and later worked in a Montessori preschool. Um, and I was also blessed to serve for about 10 years as the National Secretary of Mure Talibat, which is for student affairs for Lajna. Um, so that gave me a chance to work with older youth and 
elementary and very young children. Um, I got into teaching a roundabout way. Um, some families in our area, some Ahmadi families came together and were interested in starting a private school um, where we could have an Islamic curriculum and a high academic level. And Alhamdulillah, we were able to have that school for about seven years. Um, and it was in that time when I gained some experience um, without having much before at all um, in setting up a syllabus and working with um, children in different class levels. I know from the time of the fourth Khalifa and our present Hazur, may Allah strengthen his hand, that we got a lot of guidelines and advice on encouraging, I would say is the word, encouraging Ahmadi women to really find their self-confidence um, and to take pride in being an Ahmadi woman. And I think we, we did get a lot, many messages from Hazur about this. Um, and then other values, you know, he, he wanted us to instill, you know, values and integrity in our everyday lives. He wanted us to be people that the outside society can trust us and depend on us. Um, and then the element of compassion and empathy for other people that you know, we should always be giving back. We should always be worrying about others. And I think these are instructions and teachings that the Khulafa have always given, that ladies, Ahmadi women, should always be a source of good in the community. Um, so I think that's really important. And having that self-confidence that you are the same person everywhere you go, we can be that same person. We can be honest about who we are and dependable. There is absolutely no reason for any of you to bear an inferiority complex or to feel embarrassed upon the practice of your faith. Worldly people may claim that exposing one's body, dressing suggestively, or bringing sexual behavior into the public arena are signs of progressive society and one in which freedom of expression is valued. However, they could not be more wrong. I think our ladies here in America are, are very active and go out in the community a lot um, and really get to know their neighbors and volunteer in their children's schools, um, you know, and contribute in many charities. Um, so I feel like we have a lot of opportunities to put into practice those values that the Khulafa teach us. And, um, you know, as a teacher, I tried to establish those things so that I wasn't preaching to people, but they knew that whatever I did was because I was Muslim. Um, so I mentored new employees, you know, and tried, they had very little experience and I tried to have patience with them and support them. I counseled parents. Um, and so you try to think of your job as how can I help other people rather than clocking in and clocking out. Um, and, and it helps a lot and people are drawn to you. Um, and I also felt that having that identity and that confidence that Hazor was asking us to have, um, I was able to impact young children who may not have been around Muslims otherwise. And by having that attachment to me, they had a positive impact about seeing someone in hijab. Um, as, as the secretary for Amore Talibat, um, we spent a lot of time with our youth, our Ahmadi girls. Um, we had camps for them. We did Jalsa programs every year. And we always gave the message of Khilafat at, the, at those times. We thought that that was really important for their age. We talked a lot about Ahmadi identity and Khilafat. And we also gave Hazor's instruction that whatever path they chose, career they chose, that it should always be of benefit to humanity and not just thinking about material gain or your own advancement. And we try to give that message a lot to our youth. At times, men have considered themselves to be intrinsically different to women, or women have considered themselves inherently 
different to men. However, the Holy Quran has categorically refuted this concept by saying that men and women are of the same kind. It has clarified that men and women have the same feelings and emotions. Similarly, as each man will be accountable before Allah for his deeds, so will each woman also be held accountable for her acts before God. So I was thinking about how in the Holy Quran that, you know, equality, spiritual equality is given to men and women. And I feel that Khilafat is kind of an enactment of that teaching in the Quran because women have equal access to the Khalifa. We have equal opportunity to, you know, carry out any of his directives. And we can really take as much or as little from Khilafat as we, we want to. And we have that equal opportunity to do that. Um, we can have a one-on-one -on -one relationship through writing and communicating with Hazur. We can, you know, be part of directives that Hazur gives only to women to carry out. And, uh, for example, uh, building the mosque in Zion and, you know, th these kind of um, projects. So I think we definitely are empowered by Khilafat. Um, and we receive so many direct instructions and guidelines that are only for ladies, which help us a lot to, you know, figure out the road ahead and, and what we should be doing. Thus, I ask all of you to understand and assume your responsibilities and to fulfill, fulfill your pledge to morally train the next generation in the best way and to bring your children close to the Jamaat. I ask all of you to be ready to propagate Islam's teachings through tabligh within your own circles and especially to women. If you understand your duties, I am sure you will be successful in spreading the message of Islam Ahmadiyyat far and wide. Only then will you have fulfilled the requirements and obligations of your bad. May Allah enable you all to do so. May Allah continue to bless Lajna Maila UK and indeed our Lajna organizations throughout the world. Amen. By the grace of Allah, the institution of Khilafat continues to shield us from harmful influences around us, particularly here in the West. We pray that Ahmadi Muslim women continue to play our role and transforming society for the better. Through the teachings of Islam, as taught to us by Hazrat Khalifa al-Masih, may Allah be his helper. May Allah enable all of you to fulfill your duties in the best way, and may you all prove to be shining stars of Ahmadiyyat. May Allah the Almighty continue to bless Lajnaim Allah in all respects, Amin. सूरत पर के मरते हैं खिलाफत पर के मरते